Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to film my five hypo prevention tips. So as you might already know, you can definitely tell by my channel name, I am a diabetic and in particular I'm a type 1 diabetic and I have been for many many years and a hypo prevention is something that I've only just started to get the hang of. When I was younger and throughout most of my teenage years anyway, I was very, very scared and very conscious of hypos and I really didn't like them. So I have run my blood sugars high for the majority of my life, which in turn isn't really good. And hypos themselves also that aren't that great. But I'm trying to get to that point in my life now where I can just find a, a happy medium in between them both so I'm already presuming if you're watching this video you are a type 1 diabetic so please know you're not alone and these tips that I'm about to share with you might not work for you these are the tips that work for me in particular and they're just the sort of things that I've picked up along my way so one of my first tips is going to be plan ahead if you know you're going to be out or doing an activity which maybe uses a bit more um, I guess it raises your heartbeat if, you, if you're going to be doing something that puts a bit more of a strain on you or you're going to be out and eating in a new place and you don't quite know your carb amount then plan ahead you should hopefully already by now know what different activities do to your blood sugar levels um, I know for me walking for long periods of times and in particular shopping it does make my blood sugar levels drop and I find that whenever I go out shopping, I do have more hypo episodes. And I also know when I go out to eat in places like Frankie and Bernie's in particular, um, I just can never find the nutritional values numbers that I really need. So try and plan ahead and just find all the information you need online, especially in regards to like the menu and stuff. And also just take into consideration your exercise and activity. Um, for me, whenever I do this, I have to reduce a basal amount on my pump, and this prevents hypos, and I can't say it fully prevents them, but it does stop a lot of them. My second tip would be to prepare for the worst. Hypos are going to happen. So my tip for this is to always carry around a hypo snack, and then an extra one. For me, it would put a lot of stress on myself if I didn't have a hypo snack when I was going out. I would feel just very anxious and anxiety makes my blood sugars drop as well so I like to make sure I've got two snacks on me just in case my bloods drop and just by being prepared I just feel more equipped and more ready for a hypo to come I don't feel like they're as daunting if I've got everything I need I hate being cut short my third tip would be to have precise measurements. I'm a pump, insulin pump user. I've had to work alongside my dietitian and consultant just to work out my insulin rates throughout the day, what insulin amounts I'd need for different meals throughout the day, um, and also a carb ratio that works good for me. So always speak to your dietitian and consultant before doing these um, because it can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. But I have to make sure that my carb levels are pretty well good and I know how to measure my carbs out, I know how to read the back of a packet of like crisps or something and I know how to input that information correctly into my pump so I get the most accurate, most precise amount of insulin um, that is possible. I know being on an insulin pen this was much harder so if you are still an insulin pen user um, I know I know how hard it is but just be careful and just be as prepared and just really know what you're doing with your stuff it's taken me years to figure this out and know what I'm doing um, and it's taken a lot of meetings with my consultant and dietitian and as you get older and as your situation changes um, so do your insulin tolerance levels as well so my fourth tip is going to be monitor your diet. I know for me and I know for a lot of people that having fast acting carbs as a main diet, as consuming as your main diet is really bad. So like having loads of sweets, um, like loads of biscuits and stuff like that, it's really not good for you. Um, you obviously need to do insulin for this quick acting carb uh, but then I find that I drop really quickly if I have a quick acting carb so I like to make sure that my carbs aren't always quick acting I do occasionally have them but I do try and stick to a low slow moving carb throughout my body I just find the insulin works a lot better for me if I'm having a slow acting carb and also maybe have a look at having a low or no carb diet as well because then you do not have to take as much insulin so there is less I feel like there's probably less room for error, but I'm still yet to try and work out how I can feel full 
and have a pretty much a zero carb diet. So my fifth tip to maybe consider is have you looked into CGMs and um, if you're an insulin pen user looked into insulin pump therapy. I find I have the Guardian and Light sensor which is a CGM and it's Medtronic and it works alongside my Medtronic 640G pump. I find having these devices for my diabetes is really good for me. It helps me keep my blood on track, but it keeps my blood sugars more stable. I think I've talked about this before more in depth in another video. I'll try to link it down below if I have. But yeah, maybe look into different devices on the market for your diabetes because diabetes isn't an easy thing to deal with and if you can find a device, a contraption that works for you and helps you keep your blood sugars at a more stable level, then and I have to suggest it. I have to full on sing the praises off because I just I think my blood sugars, especially throughout pregnancy, would have been so much more worse. I think maybe you're having a lot of hypos, speak to your healthcare pra practitioner um, and just have a little look and see what would suit you on a device market. Maybe even a Libra meter or something similar, um, just something the way you can track your bloods and it's just so much easier to kind of see then see a pattern in your bloods maybe, um, you know, like to fix your errors if you're hypoing all the time. So that is everything for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to click subscribe and leave a comment down below. Um, these have been all my tips, so please remember that they may not work for you, but they do work really well for me. I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Bye.